around with nuclear weapons in videos is fun. There's a visceral joy in blowing things up and a horrifying fascination with things like fireballs, shockwaves and radiation. And while it does help put our destructive power in perspective, it's not the best way of understanding the real impact of a nuclear explosion. This isn't about city stacks of TNT or about how bright an explosion is. Nuclear weapons are about you. So we've partnered with the Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement to explore what would really happen if a nuclear weapon were detonated in a major city today. Not nuclear war, just one explosion. We begin our story in the middle of downtown in a major city. People are going to work, studying for exams, are lost in their thoughts and daily lives. Right here, a nuclear weapon is detonated and time freezes. The first phase of the explosion happens within less than a second. In a millisecond, a ball of plasma hotter than the sun appears and grows in a fireball to more than two kilometers across. Within this ball, everyone is just gone. Think of water dripped onto a very hot pan, a sizzle, and then there's nothing. Most buildings, cars, trees, tacky sculptures, and people, all evaporated. First, the flash, an intense tsunami of light, washes over the city in an instant. If you happen to have your head pointed in the direction of the explosion, it renders you blind for a few hours. The heat of this light produces a thermal pulse, so energetic and hot that it just burns everything as far as 13 kilometers from the destination site. What this means is that everything in an area of 500 square kilometers that is able to burn, starts burning. Plastic, wood, fabric, hair, and skin. If you happen to be in reach of the thermal pulse, one moment you're on your way to work, the next moment you're on fire. Now the second phase begins. It happens in a few seconds. Most people will now first notice that something is wrong, but it's already too late for hundreds of thousands. The flash is followed by the shockwave. The heat and radiation of the fireball create a bubble of superheated and super compressed air around it that's now expanding explosively. Faster than the speed of sound, creating winds stronger than hurricanes and tornadoes. Human infrastructure is no match for its power. Most major buildings within a kilometer of the fireball are just ground up down to their base. Only steel reinforced concrete is able to partially resist the pressure. In the surrounding parks where retirees feed the ducks, trees blackened and smoldering from the heat a second before snap like toothpicks. If you're outside, you get tossed away like a grain of dust in a tornado. The shockwave weakens as it travels outwards, but still, about 175 square kilometers of houses collapse like they're made of cards, trapping tens of thousands of people who didn't have any time to react. Gas stations explode and fires spread throughout the rubble. A mushroom cloud made from the remains of the fireball, dust and ash, rises kilometers into the sky in the next few minutes and casts a dark shadow over the ruined city. This violently calls in fresh air surrounding the city, destroying more buildings and providing an abundance of oxygen. It depends on the city what happens next. If there's enough fuel, fires may turn into a firestorm that burns the rubble, everybody trapped in it, and people trying to flee the devastation. Up to 21 kilometers from the explosion, people just like you rush to their windows to take pictures of the mushroom cloud, unaware that the shockwave is still coming at them, about to shatter their windows and create a blizzard of sharp glass. The third phase begins in the coming hours and days. We're used to the idea that help will come, no matter the disaster. This time is different. A nuclear explosion is like every natural disaster at once. There are hundreds of thousands or millions of people with serious injuries, lacerations, broken bones, serious burns. In the next few minutes and hours, thousands more will die because of these injuries. Countless people are trapped in collapsed buildings like in earthquakes or blinded by the flash, deaf from the blast wave and unable to flee through streets impassable with rubble and debris. They're terrified, confused and don't know what's happened to them or why. Most likely many hospitals have been leveled along with all the other buildings and most medical professionals are either dead or injured along with everyone else. The survivors lucky enough to have been in metro tunnels or standing in the right place to be unburned and unhurt won't have truly escaped harm yet. Depending on the type of weapon, where it explodes and even the weather, an awful black rain can begin, with radioactive ash and dust descending on the city, covering everything and everyone. The invisible, malicious, silent horror of radiation takes its turn. Every breath carries poison to the lungs of the survivors. Over the coming days, the people who receive the highest doses of radiation exposure will die. There will be no help, not for hours or maybe even days. Civilization doesn't operate when there is a total breakdown of infrastructure. Roads are blocked, train tracks walked, runways cluttered with rubble. No water, no electricity, no communication, no stores to replenish supplies from. Help from surrounding cities will have a hard time entering the disaster zone, and even if they can, the radioactive contamination will make it risky to get too close. After a nuclear attack, you're on your own. So, bit by bit, people emerge from the rubble, on foot, contaminated with radioactive fallout, carrying what little they may have left. They are slow, in pain, traumatized, and they all need food, water, and medical treatment fast. And the damage done by a nuclear weapon doesn't end when the fires burn out and the smoke clears. The hospitals in the neighboring cities are under-equipped for a disaster of this scale, and overwhelmed with tens or hundreds of thousands of patients with serious injuries. In the weeks, months, and years to come, many of those who survived will succumb to cancers like leukemia. The reason no government wants you to think about all this is because there is no serious humanitarian response possible to a nuclear explosion. There's no way to really help the immediate victims of a nuclear attack. This is not a hurricane, wildfire, or earth quake or nuclear accident. It is all of these things at once, but worse. No nation on earth is prepared to deal with it. The world has changed in the past few years, with world leaders again explicitly and publicly threatening each other with nuclear weapons. Many experts think the danger of a nuclear strike is higher than it has been in decades. Governments tell their citizens that it's good that we have nuclear weapons, but it's bad when anyone else gets them. That it's somehow necessary to threaten others with mass destruction to keep us safe. But does this make you feel safe? It only takes a small group of people with power to go crazy or rogue, a small misstep or a simple misunderstanding to unleash a catastrophe of unimaginable proportions. Exploding stuff in videos is fun. Exploding things in real life, not so much. There is a solution, though. Eliminating all nuclear weapons and vowing never to build them again. In 2017, almost two-thirds of all the world's countries, supported by hundreds of civil society organizations and the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, agreed to prohibit and eliminate nuclear weapons. It's not about who has nuclear weapons and who doesn't. The weapons themselves are the problem. They are deeply immoral and an existential threat to all of us. No matter what country you come from, no matter what...
All right, uh, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, uh, Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls God, and uh, Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, now, what you just watched was a, uh, a video entitled, What If We Nuke a City? Um, Lord willing, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. I will say I do not own this clip. I just used it for edification's sake. Um, but if you would like to watch the original video, there will be a link in the description box down below. Um, but anyway, uh, the name of this video is going to be Nuclear War in Bible Prophecy. Okay, because um, a lot of people don't know, especially these Christians, you know, you ask them how the world's going to end, you know, they don't go on a rant, you know, all antichrist, you know, God's going to come back and, you know, somehow set the world on fire. You know, they don't exactly know how. But they say that, you know, yeah, by some type of fire, it's going to happen. But the scriptures clearly uh, explain how this is going to happen in many different places. Okay, the, the answer is by these ICBM nuclear missiles. Okay, now uh, I want to first start off with um, the book of Revelation. Uh, chapter 17. And verse... Uh, 16, and the ten horns which thou saw upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and they shall make her desolate and naked, and they shall eat her flesh, and they shall burn her with fire. Yeah, now, the, the, the beast with the seven heads and ten horns is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And the whore is, speaking of the, the United States of America, okay? So how are these nations going to burn America? And the answer is, is uh, by these nuclear weapons, okay? And I'm going to show in the scriptures uh, evidence to support this. The scriptures say, Isaiah 28 and 10, for precept must be precept upon precept here, little and there, little, to get the understanding of the scriptures. So we're going to go over countless uh, scriptures here in this video. Um, and I use countless loosely, of course, um, that show without a shadow of a doubt that this is what's going to happen, man. And I show you in these movies. Uh, honorable mention, uh, Planet of the Apes, America is destroyed in a nuclear holocaust. Uh, by the way, for those who didn't know, if you go, if you have that movie on DVD like I do, you go to the scene selection, the name of the scene where America is destroyed is named The Revelation. Okay, so they, these Hollywood producers, they know um, a war of the worlds and, you know, an alien invasion came to America. Um, I mean, there's so many movies where they show you either the mark of the beast, you know, uh, martial law, you know, famines, uh, you know, these nuclear missiles. And it always takes place in America. 95% of the time, it's always America in these movies. Okay? Um, but anyway, I have right here Isaiah 51 and verse 6. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell in shall die in like manner. My salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Yeah, the heaven shall vanish away like smoke. And we're gonna, we're gonna get uh, more that fits that in the book of um, Second Peter. Hold on a second. Yeah, you can't see me. Uh, it hurts my eyes a little bit, but I like the light on so you guys can see me. I'll just put on some sunglasses. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Two Peter, chapter. Let's see. Yeah, Second Peter, chapter three, and we'll start at verse. Um, Let's start at verse 10. It says, But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements they shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. All right, so let's read those two verses again. Uh, 2 Peter uh, 3 and 10. But the day of Yahweh will come in a, as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements they shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, they shall be burned up. All right? So, 
how's that going to happen? And the answer is because, as you see right here, that, that nuclear blast is what's going to, um, to bring this devastation. Okay, we got a mountain of more scriptures to go over to prove this. Okay, now again, you're not going to see the word missile or nuke in the Bible, because when these men saw these, these futuristic things, they didn't know what they were. Just like when you read uh, uh, Revelation, the uh, ninth chapter, when John, when John saw the, uh, the locusts, right? He called them locusts, but those were actually referring to the, uh, the German uh, uh, fighter jets of the First World War. All right, but he didn't know what they were, which indeed, if you look up an image of those, those uh, jets they used in that war, they do look like some type of insect if they, if, you know, when they're up in the air, you know, looking up at them. They indeed look like some type of flying creature. All right. Especially to somebody who lived back in that time when you didn't, it wasn't common to see those kind of things. Uh, let's see. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse um, 16. Behold, I have created the smith that blows the coals in the fire, and I bring his forth an instrument of his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. Yeah, the Lord have created these, these wasters to destroy, man. All right, the Lord is the one who gave this man his um his power that he has. All right, the Lord is the one who who gave these nations this this ability. Uh, I want to get the book of Zechariah. Chapter 14 and verse 12. This is the book of uh, Zechariah Chapter 14 and verse 12, it says, And this shall be the plague wherein the Lord will smite all the people who have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away as they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away within their mouths. Let's read that again. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12 it says, And this shall be the plague wherein the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away within their mouths. How is that going to happen? And the answer is that by these, uh, by these nuclear weapons, this is what's going to, to bring this to pass, man. Okay, these nuclear weapons are what, um, is how the end's going to come. These, these weapons will be the end of the world, man. Okay, this is what Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is going to have these nations use, as I showed you in the book of Revelation, the uh, 17th chapter, you know, where the beast, which is NATO, will turn against the whore, which is America, and says a nation will burn her. Now, how does a nation burn a nation today? Obviously, it's by these nuclear missiles, which actually, the prophet, um, the prophet John also saw the nuclear missiles. Now, again, you're not going to see the word uh, missile in, this, in the scriptures, because they didn't have those words back then, okay? But after we read the description he gives of them, you can clearly match them up with a ICBM nuclear missile. Uh, uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 9, and verse 15, And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men, and the number of the army of the horsemen, for two hundred thousand thousand. And I heard the number of them. Unless I saw the horses in the vision... And them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jessinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of a lion, and out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and they had heads, and with them they do hurt. Yeah, now the part of the missile that explodes is a part called the uh, the warheads, okay? Um, a tail like a serpent, when a, when a missile takes off in flight, it leaves a, a trail of smoke behind it that after, you know, a certain amount of time, it starts becoming, you know, wavy like a snake. Okay, so that's the tail. The uh, Actually, let's go up and break it down. Number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. I heard a number of them. Unless I saw the horses in the vision, and then that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and, and of uh, jessinth and brimstone, yeah, now, again, the horses, the word horse just means uh, horsepower. You got a term that means horsepower, which just basically means a, um, you know, a uh, very powerful uh, uh, thing. So these things that he saw were actually the ICBM nuclear missiles that are going to be used in this upcoming world war. 
But he had to describe it the way he did because he, he didn't know what it was. All right? There's many things as well, like, you know, even in the Apocrypha, you know, and in the Bible it mentions, you know, uh, like for a good example would be uh, the book of uh, what is it? Job, I believe it's the 20th chapter. It says he shall flee from the iron weapon, but the bow of steel will strike him through. And there's another verse that says um, that these arrows shall begin to be shot to the ends of the world. Matter of fact, I think that might be in the book of Second Ezra, 16th chapter. Let me see if I can get that real quick. Yeah, um, the book of Second Ezra, chapter sixteen, and verse uh, thirteen. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow; his arrows that he shoots are sharp, and they shall not miss when they begin to be shot to the ends of the world. Yeah, now those arrows are uh, are talking about those missiles. Now here's a fun fact: in the military, I believe it's for a a, a uh, they they call a uh, stolen missile they call it a uh, a broken arrow, and you can you can look it up. Just look up a military. Uh, a broken arrow, and and then you should get some information about it. But even they call them arrows. Okay, so as I quoted earlier, the scriptures tell you the, about arrows being shot to the ends of the world. And what arrow can be shot to the end of the world? And a physical wooden arrow can only be shot, you know, maybe a thousand feet or so. If that, of course, if that. Um, you know, I have a friend that has a bow and arrow, so I'll, I might go ahead and ask him. <laughs> But uh, a and, and missile can literally travel across the world, man. Okay, in a matter of just a couple minutes. Okay, so that's what it's talking about. But anyway, uh, it says, The heads of the horses as the head of a lion, and out of their mouths so she'd fire, smoke, and brimstone. Yeah, out of them when they, when they uh, you know, explode, it issues fire, smoke, and brimstone. Okay, now when you read in the scriptures later on, it says that a beast and a false prophet... They were taken and cast alive into a lake, a fire burning with, with brimstone. Now that brimstone and you know, lake of fire is what's these uh these missiles here, or these these horses, as he calls it, that's what they're gonna make, which that lake of fire is referring to uh America, right, after the Third World War. Um but these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like unto serpents, and they had heads, and with them they do hurt. Now, the tail, once again, is the smoke trail behind it. The power in the tails, at the front of the tails, which, you know, would be the propeller, you have fire coming out of it. Um, and then, let's read verse 18 again. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. Yeah, and, and that's what's going to kill people. If you don't die by the fire, you're going to, buy, you're going to die from the, uh, by the smoke, okay? And then by the brimstone, okay? And as we've seen here with these nukes, you know, you have fallout, okay, which, which will kill many people, okay? So these, these things here, man, you know, with all this information that was brought out, which there's more information that we could get, but, you know, this is a plain case, man. This is plain and clear that this is what it's talking about, man. Okay, this is clearly what the scriptures are talking about. Okay, this is how the world's going to end. Okay, this this is going to be the uh, the end of the world here, man. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, bear with me. Here, give me a second. Okay. Um, the book of uh, Amos, chapter 5 and verse 18, it says, Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahweh, 
To what end is it for you? For the day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. For if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand upon the wall, and a serpent bit him, should not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. Now why would there be no brightness in it? Because the sun is going to be darkened by that, that smoke. Okay? By that smoke that's going to be, um, uh, you know, let out from that, uh, from those missiles. And also when you read in the, in the scriptures, there's going to be so much smoke that um, you're going to be able to, to look across the sea and from ships. And you're going to be able to see the smoke coming up. And it even tells you that here. Let me go ahead and get that real quick. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Revelation 18 and 8. Therefore shall her plague come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is Yahweh who judges her. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. They shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Wait a second. When they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, the mighty city, for one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. Let me see. There's also mentions another part. Verse 15, For the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Yeah, and, and why is that? Because, again, that smoke, you're going to be able to see that smoke coming up from America when this takes place. Okay, which, again, that smoke's going to be those missiles. Okay? Um, so pretty much this video that you watched, um, yeah, this video within a video that you watch, which, again, if you want to watch the whole thing because I cut it a little bit short, and I played it faster, so if you want to watch it slower to get a deeper breakdown of it, you can find a link in the description box. I recommend you watch it. Uh, but yeah, you know, pretty much that proves it, man. Okay, the, according to the scriptures, that's how the world's going to end. Okay, but anyway, with that being said, I want to give all praise to Yahweh Shai, and I'm going to say Shalom.